Still have a few bucks left after your holiday spending? Looking for some interesting games that you might have missed and can be had for dirt cheap now? Well, sit tight as I will offer up 7 suggestions on games that I think deserve some more love. Each is currently on offer for less than 10 bucks. Please keep in mind that this list is based off of the Steam Winter Sale of 2022. Most of these games are also available on different platforms, but prices may vary. Regardless of price though, these are all great games, so how about we dive straight in with the first one. Astalon, Tears of the Earth In this 8-bit stealth metrovania, you navigate through a deadly tower as three heroes, in hopes to restore some life to their dying village. Whilst I have played all of the games on this list, this is the one that managed to hook me the most and I just couldn't put down until I saw it through to the end. You can change between characters at campsites and each shines in their own way and is needed for particular obstacles, be that in exploration or combat. The tower is pretty big and filled with cool secrets and upgrades to find. You can upgrade your heroes further through a shop when you die, and you will die. Without spoiling too much, death and how it mechanically works in this game is woven nicely into the narrative and gives the game a bit of a bleak vibe, which is balanced nicely with the likeable cast. There are even multiple endings and extra modes to play around with for some great replay value. The one thing I wished for during my time playing was a way to make notes on the map, as I kept getting lost all the time looking for where those spots were exactly that I could now bypass with a new ability. Apart from that, if you like action adventure games with a fair challenge and are drawn to retro logs, at just 8.39 this is a no brainer. Crosscode this 16-bit-like action RPG comes up fairly often as a hidden gem and with good reason. It's a fantastic game with a whole slew of interesting abilities that will require mastery in order to overcome the many dungeons that house some pretty devious puzzles. The game's premise and story are also pretty interesting. You play as the amnesiac Leia who is stuck in an online game called Crossworlds. So you're playing a game within a game. Along the way you'll learn more about who Leia is exactly and her connection to the game. I enjoy how the game portrays the idea of an MMO, despite being single player. You've got your guilds, quests and party members who have to log off to go to school and stuff. It's quite charming that way. It does feel like the overarching story takes a bit of a backseat, you're mostly playing the game Crossworlds for a good while. Which is good fun regardless, I just feel like story wise things could have been paced out a bit better to keep interest in both sides up throughout. I also found that combat could at times be incredibly difficult for me and a lot of enemies felt a bit too tanky for my liking. Also, Ice Physics, good god get the upgrade that helps against that as soon as you can. I'm ashamed to say that I never beat this game. The difficult combat caused me to set it aside for a bit too long and you know how that goes, you forget everything. Seeing and talking about it now really makes me want to dive back into it and see it all the way through to the end. It's currently just 7 bucks so if you haven't checked it out yet and you enjoy overhead adventure games that will put your skills to the test, it's a definite must. Crystal Project Here's a game I don't see get mentioned too often and I don't really understand why. It's such a labor of love by just one person and with that in mind I'm just blown away by the pure scope and execution of this game. If you've enjoyed the gameplay of Final Fantasy V in particular, I implore you to try this game out. Final Fantasy V happens to be my favorite game in the series in a mechanical sense so this was right up my alley. What we have here is a JRPG with a very flexible job system, a semi-open world ripe for exploration and a pretty solid difficulty curve. You find that the jobs are pretty well balanced and quite unique in their playstyles and that it's really hard to just waltz over everything by some game breaking builds. Some real thought went into all of the skills and their synergies. Each victory feels quite rewarding as you have to really work for it. The huge world also seems well constructed, opening up more as you find new ways to move about and each new area houses some crystals which all contain new jobs. Of course there's plenty of other goodies to find besides that. What I found very encouraging and inviting for a casual pleb like myself is that nothing in the game is missable. Exploration involves platforming which can be a bit fiddly at times but I found that the block based design helps in judging a movement well enough. 
Something I didn't like was the very limited ways of fast travel in such a big world. However, through some updates, the game has become very customizable, so that you can tailor the experience exactly to your own liking. It even has a randomizer, all around awesome stuff. The one downside I suppose is that the story won't blow you away. There is something there, but it's not the main appeal at all. If you liked Final Fantasy V, you know what that's like exactly already. And for just 8.69, you get a whole lot of that same kind of kick-ass experience you crave so, so much. Kaze and the Wild Masks Only played a little of this one so far, but it's a game I've been eyeing for a while now. It's a platformer that feels like one of those 16-bit mascot ones. You know, your Sonics and the likes. It has some different collectibles going on, which reminds me a lot of the Crash Bandicoot games. I suppose the music and having a spin attack in your base form kind of helped me draw that comparison, but this is strictly a 2D affair and it controls very well. So far, I haven't run into any frustrating deaths where I could blame it on the controls at least. Apart from Kaze's base bunny form, you can also get cool upgrades by finding the Tichiro masks. These will transform him into different animal hybrid things, which offer different abilities like the ability to fly, swim or turn the level into something that resembles the minecart stages in Donkey Kong Country, oh joy. These masks are found at set locations and basically dictate the gameplay for that level. It helps to give the gameplay some variety. Again, I haven't gone too far into this one yet so can't really tell you too much about it myself, but so far I had great fun with it and for just a fiver I dare say that if you like platformers you would enjoy it too. Monolith I only discovered this one myself, but immediately fell in love with its addictive gameplay. It's a roguelike twin shooting affair. You know, you go in room, kill stuff that needs killing, collect stuff that needs collecting and get screwed by that one gamble you've made and see your run get ruined in an instant and get to gleefully do it all over again. I love how fast paced this one is and the simplistic style it has. This makes it easy to focus on the action and just use your energy to panic as half of the screen fills up with stuff to dodge. From what I've seen so far, there is a great deal of variety in enemies, weapons and upgrades, more of which unlock as you play more. There are also hidden rooms and no doubt other secrets to uncover and I can see myself having a go at this one quite often. It's one of those games that has that one more go feeling hanging about it and since games don't take too long, at least not for me, it makes for an easy pick to get a quick game in. The game's only 4 bucks right now, add 4 more and you've got the DLC as well which adds more content, so even combined it's under a tenner. Skyforce Reloaded Here we have a modern shoot'em up that I found myself enjoying quite a bit. It's a genre I'm pretty terrible with, but the way this game handles progression makes it very accessible. Each stage has 4 objectives, earning you medals. Later stages unlock with a number of medals, so you'll have to get good enough to earn those shinies. To help with that, destroyed enemies drop stars, which are used as currency to upgrade your ship. This in turn makes the stages easier, so you get this wonderful natural progression. If you're good at the game, you progress through the stages faster and get to bigger challenges. If you're not as good, a lost game never feels like a total waste as you're still working toward new upgrades. What's also great is that the game makes use of the entire screen. No forced state mode here, which if not an arcade conversion seems silly to me. It also offers local co-op, so that screen real estate is great for that. Even though the game has been out for a few years by now, it still looks and sounds great to me. The game offers different toys to play around with, including unlocking new ships. I found the actual weapons rather underwhelming however, they're just rather uninspired from what I've seen so far. Not that I've seen all that there is to see, as with my skill level it's quite a grind. Still, it's addicting and does have that fun arcadey feel. Right now it's only 250 and for that it's an absolute steal. The previous game in the series is also up for the same price, though I can't comment on that one. As a little side tip for those looking for a more traditional shooter, the absolute classic that is Ikuruga is currently up for grabs for 450. Sneaky little additional game there for ya. The Vagrant Another game that kicked my ass so bad that I cowered away into my shell too long for me to actually dive back into where I was. 
So one I've not actually completed and need to get back into at some point. But wow does this game look beautiful. It reminds me a lot of Odin's Sphere for PS2 with its breathtaking sprite work. There is some platforming and exploration in this 2D adventure and the environments look awesome as well. This is no Metrovania though. The game is all about the combat and it's a very competent brawler with responsive controls and quite a few skills and moves to play around with. There is some light customization in items as well and higher stats can make a difference, though it's your skill that's mostly tested here. Especially the bosses will prove quite difficult and they are the highlight of the game for sure. There's also more difficult beefed up versions of these titans for an extra challenge and amazing rewards of course. Luckily save points tend to be close by these encounters. Annoyingly though, cutscenes are unskippable which gets super frustrating for someone like me who needs lots of retries. The story and setting also didn't click with me at all. I'm not really sure why, I just didn't care for it, but that might just be me. However, it's still a very easy recommendation for me. Besides it being just a good game in general, there's also the insane reason that it's just 79 cents right now, that's just crazy. I think I initially paid 10 bucks or so and I am happy with the game that I got for that price. This is a must for any brawler fan, especially for fans of games from Vanillaware. And there you have it, 7 games that I've enjoyed and would like to shine some light on. Each of these offer amazing value for the ridiculous prices you can get them for now. Are there any you're picking up? Which ones do you own already and what do you think about them? What other games would you recommend to me? Let me know in the comments down below. And as you do that, I'd like to thank you very much for watching. I hope you've liked the video and hope to see you back in future videos, either mine or yours. And until that time, take care, enjoy the holidays and for now, the muzzle.